Hello, hello, hello. It's Emma Holmes coming in from Rockstar HQ and I want to come in and talk about making money in your business. Making money in your business and how I know that so often stacks and stacks of my rock stars will come in and say to me, oh, I'm just not getting the money rolling. I feel like I'm working really, really hard and it's just not happening and I don't know what to do. And, 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 and I get it. I totally, totally get it. I hear you. And I know that this is something that is um, really common. So that's the first thing to know is that you're not alone when it comes to feeling like you're working really hard, but you can't quite get those finances rolling. And it feels a little bit clenched at best, um, difficult and hard and a little bit of an endurance activity at worst. So what I want to come in and talk to you today is about some of the most common mistakes that I see, some of the most um, common things that are going on when it comes to selling and sales that mean that lots of my um, gorgeous rock stars who don't know this stuff yet fall foul to finding it really difficult to get those sales rolling. So first thing is that when you are looking at making sales, then this isn't something that is dirty and disgusting and needs to be swept under the carpet. This isn't something that you should be um, in massive, massive resistance to. So I find that um, lots of people are really scared of selling. And I often get people say to me, well, can I actually sell anything on social media? You know, isn't it wrong to be selling on social media? Well, no, because what you need to be doing is you need to be making sure that you are placing your sales message in front of the right people for your business. If you are not sharing what people can purchase from you, then you're stealing from the people who need it. And this includes you sharing that on your social media, this includes you sharing that on your website, this includes you sending people to um, products from any appropriate blog posts that give them a paid for product as the next step or the next course of action for them to take. And it's okay for you to be sharing a sales message. It isn't icky, it isn't disgusting, it isn't horrible, it, unless you do it in an icky, disgusting and horrible way. So the first thing is, is to get comfortable with the fact that selling and sales is part of being in business and that in order for you to achieve the outcomes and goals within your business and in order for you to be able to help and support people at the deepest possible level and give them the opportunity to sample and work with you, then it's important that you tell them about what you've got for sale. So get comfortable with the fact that selling is part of your business and that it is okay to talk about things that you have for sale. It isn't something that you should resist. It isn't something that you should be like <sighs> around. You, you need to be talking about this stuff. It is okay to talk about this stuff. Start talking about it. It's totally fine. So that's the first thing that I want to tell you. The next thing that I want to say is that when people start to get a little bit more comfortable with the fact that actually they are going to have to talk about things for sale. Um, there is an element of stealth selling that starts to happen. So you dig down deep and you hide your sales message underneath loads and loads of other stuff. Now, I am all for you providing loads of value and loads of benefit when you're selling as well, but you can't always hide that message underneath a stack of other stuff. People are really, really busy and they can't go digging in order to find um, a sales message that's hidden right down under here. They need to be able to have that opportunity to see what it is that you've got for sale at a glance, quickly, be able to get hold of something with ease. So make sure that you are bringing together um, a sales strategy that isn't wholly exclusively stealth selling, that isn't about you trying to hide that sales message as far down as you possibly can, that isn't about you kind of paying lip service to um, the sales within your business. So make sure that you do have an element of selling that is loud and proud. I often see people as well showcasing stuff that they've got for sale and I saw this just the other day and there was no ability for me to purchase it. 
there was no link to buy, there was no ability for me to get through and purchase it. Now, I know that lots of people are resistant to adding links, particularly on places like Facebook, because they feel that the algorithm is going to... Um, it's going to knock them big time if they place a link in a post. Well, I would rather have less people see a post that um, are able to take action on that post than more people see the post, but nobody can buy. So it is important that you include the ability for people to make the purchase, that you're including the link that takes somebody to find out more or to be able to actually purchase that product that you've got. Don't leave it to your crowd's um, own kind of impetus to go and search it out. Don't make me go and have to find how I buy this thing. Don't make me have to go and dig because chances are I'm not going to go and dig. Chances are I'm a little bit busy and I'm probably not going to dig. So it is important that you make sure that there is an element of that sales message being a sales message where I can take a journey to sell, where I can actually take the next step and make the purchase and buy the thing rather than me having to go out and look for it. The next one is benefits. Benefits, benefits, benefits. When you're looking at um, at selling something, then I want to know what's in it for me. If I'm going to buy something from you, what is in it for me? So I often see people who say that they've got this thing for sale, this particular um, service, online product, program, and it talks about the modality of delivery. It talks about what people are actually going to get for their money, but it doesn't talk to me about why I should care what is in it for me? That's always the question that I write on the top of a bit of paper when I'm brainstorming, thinking about something. What's in it for them? As in my crowd, my customers, my clients. What is in it for them? Because that's what's really, really important insofar as looking at that message is concerned. People want to know what's in it for them. People want to know what they're going to get out of this particular product or service. So rather than, you know, you telling me the, the intricate details of how you're going to um, deliver that product to me or how you're going to, um, what's included in that product, tell me about the benefits and the outcomes. What am I going to get as a result of that? And I've used the analogy in the past when I've been talking to one-to-one -to -one clients of saying to them, if you sat there and you said to me that you were going to take me tomorrow to Jamaica then actually, I don't care that much how we're going to get there. I care that I'm going to be able to kick back, I'm going to be able to lay on the beach, I'm going to be able to sip some cocktails in Montego Bay. I'm looking at the benefits, I'm looking at what's in it for me. And you know what? The actual modality of how we're going to get there and the intricate details of it, I don't much care about. Yeah, you know, I'm going to have to get to the airport and that kind of jazz, but... It's more about what's in it for me. It's about the benefits that I am going to get. The next one is about consistency. So making sure that you are consistently telling people about that product or program or service because one flash in the pan ain't going to cut it, okay? So even with the best will in the world, all right, your, um, your post isn't going to reach all of your fans on your Facebook page. Not everybody is going to open that newsletter that falls into their inbox. So some of your crowd are not going to see that particular offer on the first occasion. You need to make sure that you are consistently speaking about the product or program that you might have in launch sequence at that moment or whether you're going to do a campaign for a particular um product or service that you have sat on your website, whatever it might be, it, you can't just do a one-off post. It can't just be a flash in the pan. You have to look at having a consistent message and you have to look at posting on numerous occasions in different modalities. So it might be that you put out a video talking about a particular product or program that you've got available. It might be that you take a photograph of the product or program. It might be that you um, do a big text post about the thing that you've got for sale. But think about the different modalities of delivery. Think about the different times of day that your crowd are likely to be online and likely to be engaging in things. 
Think about how you can um, add a little bit of, I call it the funk factor when we're looking at launch plans, but how you can bring a little bit of an element of funkiness into your launch and make it a little bit more exciting, which is the same for your sales strategy. You know, ultimately, when I'm talking about a launch, I'm talking about a focused sales strategy for a set period of time. You know, this is the same when we're talking about, generally talking about selling. So think about how you can bring a little bit of excitement and a little bit of, um, Zhuzh um, into your marketing. And the final one is urgency and scarcity. Now, not all products lend themselves to an element of urgency and scarcity, but perhaps if you are offering one to one products, then you've only got room to take on so many each week, each month, each year. So tell people that you've only got X number of spaces available right now. If you are looking at something that is going to not be for sale in a few weeks time, then make sure that people know about that. So if there is an element of urgency and scarcity that you can add in, then make sure you're telling people because that's a compulsion to purchase. It's going to make them want to buy rather than sit there and think, oh, I might come back to that later, or I might think about that again, etc, etc. They're going to go, okay, I'm going to need to make that decision. Now, let me just put a caveat with this. I am not part and parcel and um, advising you to do fear-based selling, all right? I absolutely despise the sales posts that go out there that say kind of along the lines of, if you don't buy this, then you're going to be a huge fail. I Don't do that. I also, you know, don't want you to make um, it, it a fear-led um, sales process where people are kind of being pushed into purchasing from you because people don't want to be pushed in. You know, ever since the days of the jokes of the, you know, the, the car salesman kind of feeling, then people haven't wanted that kind of pushy sales. If there is an element of urgency and scarcity that lends itself to your product, then add it. But don't, one, make it up. You know, don't just pluck it out of thin air and then go back on it particularly, if you're saying that it's available for a particular period of time, then that's how long it's available for. There is absolutely nothing worse, and I've seen this so many times, um, of people saying that there's 24 hours left to buy a particular thing. And I've seen that for about a fortnight heading into my newsfeed, into my inbox. So if you're saying that this is available for 24 hours, it's available for 24 hours. You know, your, um, your relationship with your crowd is not worth lying to get them on side, you know, it has to be that this is what it is and that is the truth. So make sure that you aren't, um, you know, pushing people into purchasing with uh, fakery. So those are my top tips. First of all, let's make sure that we get comfortable with the fact that selling is part of um, being in business and that you have to create sales and that it's okay to sell. Stealth selling does have a place, but it can't be your entire sales strategy. Make sure that you are consistently putting your message out there. Make sure that you are um, getting that kind of momentum and that you are talking about the benefits of what it is that's in it for your audience, why they should care and why they should purchase. And consider whether there are any elements of urgency and scarcity that you can add in. Um, but don't make them up. Whatever you do, do not make them up. So I hope that you have taken something from that that you can go away and implement into your business. Have an absolutely ace day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.